Good afternoon, good morning, um, depending on, on uh, which part of the world you are you're joining us from. Um, I would like to thank you for taking your time to join us uh, for this webinar brought to you by WSO2 and Bring Global. My name is Steve Lubia. I'm the managing partner for Bring Global. And this webinar has been brought to you by two organizations absolutely focused on digital transformation. WSO2 as a company is a, a company focused on delivering open source technological digital transformation solutions in the banking and uh, other sectors of uh, the business world, while Bring Global is an organization focused on digital transformation solutions that um, impact millions of people's lives and their day-to-day -day, uh, lifestyle. I will allow the panelists to speak more about uh, WSO2 and Bring as we progress. Uh, but due to the time, I would like to quickly uh, then hand over to our, uh, our, our speakers for the day, starting with Christopher Davy. Christopher is a senior director uh, in solutions architecture at WSO2 based in London. Um, Chris is, uh, leads the integration of the API technology business in WSO2 and will be speaking to us about all things API. What, what are APIs about? What is even an API in the first place? Many of us speak about APIs, uh, heard about them, and today is a great session for Chris to really take us through from his expertise on exactly what the APIs are, how they apply in the enterprise world, and what WSO2 has and WC2 and Bring have in store for us uh, today for, from an African bank's perspective. The other speaker today, we have my colleague and friend, Mr. Paolo Gulao, a partner in our data solutions line of business. Paolo has been uh, with us for uh, since 2015 and leads the integration business, very much aligned with Chris, Chris uh, from a WC2 standpoint. And uh, Paolo leads our teams in terms of delivery of integration solutions in the API uh, management and the API economy. With that and myself, my name is Steve Lubia. I'm the managing partner for Bring Global for the Sub-Saharan African region. And I look forward to this uh, session going forward. A bit of housekeeping. Um, uh, questions will be, uh, can only be taken on the Q&A uh, section on, the, uh, on, on Zoom. So uh, we will be taking questions uh, please jot down as we go on. Please uh, forward all your questions. Um, we will be, after Chris and Paolo take us through um, the sessions, I will be coming back to, to just moderate any Q&A session that will be there. And we will also be having, uh, we'll be taking a poll around um, uh, open banking API questions that will be relevant from the presentation today. And with that, Chris, I would like to hand over to you. Please take us through. Tell us what the fuss is all about, what everyone is asking about APIs, and where uh, our, our valid customers can gain from this session. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks a lot, Steve. OK, uh, without further ado, let's, uh, let, let's kick off. So I'm going to start with a high-level overview of what are APIs and how do they help us in business. I'm not going to go into you know, deep technical detail. This is more about the sort of the business use cases and what you're trying to achieve uh, with APIs more than the sort of in-depth uh, technical capabilities and protocols, uh, et cetera, that you need uh, to run those. We've got plenty of material on that. And if you've got any questions on that, please do um, uh, let me know. So first off, um, what are APIs? So the main thing, I always like to sort of talk about with APIs is, is they're there to access data. You know, that, that at the end of the day, an API is an interface to a data or a service that provides data. Uh, and an API is a quick way of integrating your services to uh, enable you to get that data to the right place, the right people in a secure manner at the right time. And that's the main sort of uh, aspect of, of an API if you just keep it at a high level. Yes, there's lots of uh, technical aspects uh, to it, technical uh, protocols and, and ways of doing them and types of APIs. But at the end of the day, what you're trying to do is get data to the right place 
uh, in a secure uh, manner. So why would you want to use an API? And we're gonna delve into this a little bit more uh, later in the slides, um, but the sort of uh, API led integration uh, that WSO2 uh, does a lot of with many customers in many verticals. The, the core goals of uh, this integration is to assist and facilitate um, the, that digital transformation where you're trying to increase your efficiency, you're trying to improve the business, you're trying to reuse your data, you're trying to leverage um, more value out of the data, assets, services that you've invested your time and money in building. Um, and using APIs and API-led integration allows you to expose and uh, use that data and services in that secure uh, manner and improve your internal services and services to your customers, um, improve their experience um, and improve the sort of ecosystems in which you can work. And as I said, we'll go through a bit more of that uh, later. So again, at a high level, uh, what does a good API look like? Uh, the main thing is it works. It, it, it achieves your business goal. So what are you trying to do with it? Does it work? Does it enable you to um, increase your customer reach or you know, monetize a new uh, data service or you know, whatever your goal is for that, it, it's, you know, you've got to measure your success of your API on, is it achieving the goal you set out to be? You know, you can have the most um, perfectly technical API in the world, but if it's not achieving your business goals, it's not particularly useful. Um, and for that, you've got to have a flexible uh, and scalable platform that allows you to um, expose those APIs, allows people to use those APIs um, and that sort of is absolutely critical. You know, a lot of these services and the evolution of APIs and open banking and open data, the way you're going to be able to uh, quickly adapt your business to take advantage of those, uh, uh, those new uh, approaches and the new standards or new um, regulations is to have a platform that you can easily adapt and quickly adapt to expose those APIs, secure them uh, and uh, handle that. So that to me is a you know, very key thing um, in that. And they've got to be reliable and robust. And, and lastly, uh, interoperability and security. So uh, we always like to um, propose the use of open standards wherever possible. It makes interoperation between you, your partners, your customers a lot easier. Um, because everyone understands those open standards. Um, and if you look at things like the sort of PSD2 regulations and open banking, FAPI standards, the secure customer authentication uh, approaches, if you follow those um, uh, standards, you're gaining a lot of uh, reliability and robustness because a lot of people have put time into developing those to meet those particular goals. Uh, and a lot of people are very well aware of them. So they've got you know, the experience to connect to those type of interfaces, utilize those uh, and sort of uh, work within uh, a secure uh, environment, secure API environment using, you know, your OAuth2, OIDC frameworks, et cetera, that uh, make all of this, uh, these capabilities uh, work. So having an interoperable and secure API is absolutely key. And we can go into depth on and there's plenty we've got plenty of webinars and material on all of the protocols and more details on the standards you use to do that and how we've achieved that within the open banking space but uh, we're not going to sort of do that deep dive uh, today so uh, we're going to have a quick look at sort of how apis have been used in some of uh, the customers that we've worked with and how they're um, achieving additional business goals. So we've got uh, Karnataka Bank, uh, which is the 12th largest private bank uh, in India. Um, they had um, a, a goal to sort of modernize and transform their legacy services and having an API platform enabled them to expose the services, expose those APIs, achieve those business goals of um, building new standardized services and 
better integrating with uh, part third parties and providing uh, new services internally and externally. So that's it's really in a sort of a core uh, transformation stage um, that having that integration, that API led integration platform really helps uh, give the capability to achieve those um, digital transformation goals. So we've also got uh, BDO in the Philippines. Um, they were looking at, again, transforming to realize operational efficiencies, um, real-time access to transactions and data using an API-led platform. Um, and that sort of led to a sort of better, more secure customer experience, which is obviously going to you know, improve their standing with the market and in, improve their ability to attract uh, new business. And we've got similar use cases with um, Wells Fargo in the USA, where they were looking to um, improve and uh, advance their API strategy by having a, 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 a portal, a marketplace where people can come and discover, third parties come and discover and use their APIs and extend their services. And again, use these as the springboard to um, enable uh, customers to access the bank services where they are anytime, anywhere, um, and get accurate real-time data. And that's where, you know, using APIs really gives you that, uh, that fundamental capability uh, to handle those. Obviously, and our colleagues will bring uh, well ex uh, experience in this, uh, there's a lot more to, you know, connecting those systems and services to your backends and your banking platforms. Um, and how you sort of make those ready for um, an API driven um, service um, with sort of uptime and availability. But without that key flexible API uh, platform, you're going to um, you need that as a, as, a, as a good foundation stage. So we've talked a bit, you know, on those about different aspects that uh, our, our customers have gone through to um, achieve uh, business goals uh, and we're just going to put those into sort of three high level stages to start with um, and this is from the sort of the experience we've seen over the last 15 years with working with a lot of financial institutions as well as obviously the open banking um, uh, platform that we developed for the sort of eu uk standards um, so we see generally sort of three core stages uh, in API adoption is that initial internal use, that first stage of digital transformation, then moving on to um, exposing those to work with, uh, work better and improve your uh, integrations with uh, existing partners. And then the third stage is really expanding on that to sort of generate um, a marketplace where you can work with new, uh, new, new providers, new third parties, generate new business ideas, business services, um, and really leverage the power of your data uh, uh, and investment in your services that you've uh, had. So if we step into a little bit more, more detail of those, so internal use, as I said, is that sort of first stage of uh, digital transformation where you're looking to automate more internal processes, uh, reduce um, batch processes, introduce more real-time um, processes. Um, so enhancing automation in credit decisioning, where you're um, integrating your services into a risk system uh, in real time, getting risk scores, uh, pulling in lots of different data sources via APIs to be able to make that decision as rich and as robust as possible. Um, sharing your customer information across different products and services, uh, enabling you to better offer uh, the right services and uh, capabilities to your customers. Um, and as I said, pulling in that wider data pool, making it easy to uh, access data across services, across systems, where you can do new and innovative things internally uh, within uh, your organization. And having those APIs and the API um, uh, platform for your internal services gives you that ability to quickly uh, adapt and promote new um, customer channels. So moving into you know, mobile channels, kiosks, uh, wherever you 
need to expose your services to that API layer gives you a very flexible uh, approach to be able to, to do that. So if you're looking to sort of uh, then expand uh, your API use to your existing partners. So, you know, there's lots of data sharing between uh, organizations and third parties, whether you're a bank or in any other uh, industry. And having APIs available to do that, where you can expose uh, particular APIs that allow partners to share your data or you can consume data for partners. Um, that's a, been a common practice for, for some time, but APIs allows you to do that in a far more real time and streamlined manner rather than sharing bulk data or giving access to um, you know, internal services via Citrix or whatever uh, mechanisms you've seen. I've seen a lot over the years to enable third parties to get access to information from your systems and APIs just make it very easy. And this is where, where I mentioned before the interoperability uh, and using open standard makes it a lot easier for partners to adopt uh, that if you've got a um, interoperable uh, open standard driven uh, interface. Um, you can also improve your services for different customer segments. So if you're looking at sort of large corporate customers where they might be using particular uh, applications uh, or need services in a different manner to, to uh, your, your sort of retail customers or uh, other sectors of the banking um, space, you can have APIs that specifically cater to those. So um, streamlining those uh, common tasks. And as we've mentioned before, you know, pull together the data very quickly into a decision engine or uh, AI or machine learning processes that enable you to make those uh, decisions very quickly, accurately, and with a lot less risk. So if you look at uh, that sort of growing ecosystem of, of partners, uh, this is a, um, a chart from The Economist where you can see that the uh, market share, um, uh, market capitalization share is increasing for, for these fintechs. Um, and working with third parties, providing services is essential to be able to make sure that uh, you're ahead of that uh, market. So the third stage around external use with new partners. So if you look at the, the drive of the sort of open banking PSD2 um, regulations was to um, be able to increase the ecosystem of financial service providers for end consumers um, and enable customers to share their data and data ownership is a key part here with uh, the institutions they want to get the services they, they would like. So being able to work with these third parties, be able to uh, generate services with them, um, expose data for them is absolutely key. So whether you're doing it in a sort of a private access where you're um, testing new services and working very closely with sort of trusted partners and you're sort of developing services together or you're, being a little bit more open and you're generating a uh, an API marketplace where people can come test, see your APIs, uh, look at what ways that they can innovate um, um, with your data and produce services that benefit uh, both you and them. Um, these are all sort of mechanisms to sort of increase your reach um, and having key um, functions here where you can onboard those new partners in a safe, secure manner scale uh, to um, handle those um, goes back to my earlier point on having a platform that can very uh, easily handle that sort of uh, scenario is absolutely key because you don't want a long drawn out process to onboard new partners you want to make it easy slick and as secure as possible uh, and if you're taking too long or taking uh, too much uh, internal processing to do this um, you could lose opportunities and you need to be able to move quickly in these uh, changing uh, markets. So we're going to have our first uh, poll of the day. So with that sort of high level uh, overview of those sort of stages, um, I know we've uh, got a, a, a might have a, a collection of different uh, people attending, but where do uh, where do people think they are in those three stages? 
So hopefully uh, we should, you should be seeing a poll on your screen sometime soon. Uh, and if you can please vote and we'll give you about uh, 30 seconds or so uh, to, to vote on the poll and then we'll see what the results come back as. So where do you think in those three stages your bank or organisation is at uh, in the way that they're using and working with APIs? I'm hoping the poll is up because I can't see it as a panellist. <laughs> Yeah, Chris, it's up, it's up, Chris. Good. <laughs> okay, we've got a few, uh, a few votes in. Um, I see you do keep voting. Um, Okay, right. We'll have a so we've got a few people voting there, and we have a predominant amount of people, an even split between sort of stage one and two. So, so that early digital transformation, internal services, system improvement, and working uh, better with sort of third parties and existing partners, uh, and uh, just a one or two in that third stage where they're making sort of more advanced use of uh, of your um, of their APIs. Okay, thank you very much for that. So, <coughs> for each of those stages, obviously, there's different ways that your business can can benefit. Um, so we're just going to go through um, some of these at a at a high level now. Um, so if we're back to sort of stage one where you're doing that early um, uh, early um, adoption of internal APIs and improving your workflows. So these are the, the sort of the, the general goals of that digital transformation of, you know, making yourself work uh, faster and smarter, making more reuse of systems, virtually centralizing um, services, uh, improving monolithic uh, applications to work in a more um, distributed real-time manner all of those sort of uh, key capabilities that are going to help you run more efficiently and cut your your costs and expanding those customer channels again you get those efficiencies of being able to work with your partners a lot quicker without heavy manual processes or lengthy data sharing uh, via sort of manual or um, slower means but here you're also looking to um, work with customers to uh, boost revenue, not just uh, work more efficiently, um, like we've uh, seen with uh, BDO, where you can um, offer those uh, additional digital services with partners to your end customers uh, and attract uh, more business that way by having that, that better range and that uh, more um, uh, more expanded services that uh, you can you can use going forward. So, where you're um, looking for um, really uh, improving with uh, service partners and suppliers, um, again, you get the two key elements of cutting costs because you're reducing your engineering time, you're uh, improving your reuse. You're doing things in a more standardized API led way, which means that people can easily uh, connect to your system. So even your partner's time to do it is, is reduced. There's no uh, massive heavy um, development to do that integration. You're mainly focusing on building those new services and those services and working with those partners and suppliers um, will lead to sort of monetizing those services or um, enabling other um, services to be promoted to uh, sort of third parties, uh, which help um, uh, increase the, the the services you can you can sell or uh, attract new business with uh, in the market. Um, and as we mentioned on the sort of where you've got different customer segments and um, different um, uh, requirements of those, uh, like with large corporate customers. 
again, offering premium services to those customers or entities uh, where you can monetize those. You can offer very quick self-service access to this information so that these um, third parties can come in, subscribe, uh, test the data, um, build some value, uh, and you're going to be uh, increasing your revenue with a new um, stream there. So on stage three, um, as we've said, you know, the earlier stages tend to um, sort of be the, the, the banks and organizations that are just starting that sort of digital transformation journey. In stage three, you tend to have the sort of large organizations which are far more advanced in that process. And they're um, working with uh, parties to um, really advance their use of those APIs, uh, improve their customer services, in increase their uh, reach, uh, developing uh, approaches like uh, banking as a service or banking as a platform where you've got either services that other companies can embed into their um, into their uh, applications and their services that they're offering their customers where you're sort of generating a new customer base or new revenue streams through that manner or you're improving your platform you're uh, expanding the services offered to your customers you're making yourself more attractive to new customers to be able to use your platform to get access to better services, uh, better personalized services. And with APIs and the data sharing, that really helps to, uh, to in increase that. Um, when you're sort of going to that sort of more API marketplace uh, where you're trying to have really quick onboarding for new third parties, innovative third parties that are coming up with new use cases where working with different sectors um, and the banks might offer better uh, joined up um, solutions for customers, um, offer you more advantage in uh, improving the way you run your internal services, um, accessing sort of external cloud services, all of those sort of things you can pull in together um, with a very clean, quick, efficient um, API uh, portal, uh, API marketplace, where people can come on, onboard very quickly, see the value, innovate around your data and services you're offering. Maybe with looking at the metrics of that and how it's being used and what people are doing with your data, uh, that will help you develop new business uh, streams or think about new things to do with data. And as the sort of open banking progresses into open finance, and we've got other sessions where we go a bit more into, into that. Um, the opportunity for those sort of joined up services through open finance and as open data bands into other sectors as well, how those things work together and interoperate is, is going to be critical uh, in, in being able to get ahead of the game and generate those, those new winning use cases that are going to um, give you that competitive edge. Um, is, uh, a lot of uh, different um, benefits that you can get from a well-designed, a uh, well-established, flexible uh, API platform. So what we want to sort of focus on here is the the, the tools that uh, you can achieve by doing this. So we've got cut costs and do more. So that's where you're really leveraging the efficiencies and reuse. Um, new streams, onboarding new customers, increasing your customer reach, uh, making it easier for new customers to do business with you, reaching different sectors that might not be using you for other uh, reasons like the you know, ability to, to access your services. Uh, they're sort of uh, key aspects there. Deliver personalized customer services. So, you know, a lot of these um, uh, drivers on, on APIs and a lot of the third party providers that you're seeing uh, come up with uh, the sort of open banking and open finance is all about that hyper personalization. You've got a lot more data. Uh, you understand a lot more about your customer. You can give them far more uh, personalized services offers uh, with often far less risk if you've got that data because you really know how they're running their accounts, uh, what sort of things they're doing. Are they paying too much in certain areas or, or, or not? So, um, 
not quite in the banking area, but uh, you know, we're starting to see a lot more uh, sort of comparison type uh, sites where you can, uh, even in other sectors, like where you can compare your energy usage with your neighbors and, and say, oh, are you paying too much for your energy? You know, if you take that into financial services, are you paying too much for insurance? Are you getting the best savings rates? Um, and, you know, using these data, using this data and being able to understand your customer really helps deliver that key personalized service, which will give them uh, more of a, a driver to do business with you rather than one of your competitors. And five, you know, using these API on that, this platform to keep ahead of digital disruption. So if you aren't using APIs and you're not, uh, you don't have a very flexible, quick way of uh, producing new services, putting new APIs into the market, working with these third parties, you're going to really struggle to keep ahead of the curve on uh, how these new services are developing, what the new customer demands are, um, how they want sort of more secure, real-time services where they are via different channels, mobile banking, et cetera, all of those uh, aspects. So that's again, a critical one for um, the business value that having this established platform can, uh, can offer. So we're gonna move into another, uh, another poll. So of those um, key benefits we've listed there, which one of these goals do you think is the highest priority for your organization? Um, so um, if, you can, uh, uh, if you can fill that poll in, we'll give you about 30 seconds again um, and um, we'll uh, see how we go. We get another few seconds on that if you want to cast your votes, and then we'll see what uh, see what sort of results we're getting. Okay. Right. So. Personalized experiences is in the lead. That seems to be a key one that people are more focused on and delivering those uh, uh, better services to the customer and sort of new revenue streams uh, is uh, in second place there. So thank you very much for that. Uh, we need to move on here. So uh, looking at what um, banks and financial institutions are doing in, in, in this sort of space, there's a lot of data out there uh, do encourage you to go and, and have a look. Uh, this is uh, some information from InnoPay on, you know, where people are, uh, where organisations are in offering uh, API scope and uh, uh, developer experience. Um, and you can see the sort of names that are in that, um, uh, the top quadrant, which are probably, you know, pushing towards that third stage where they're really, um, really able to utilise uh, and uh, gain value from uh, their key API platform. So looking at where you want to be in that, uh, in that trend. So if you look at what sort of APIs um, people are building as well, obviously you can see there's a lot of mandated APIs there around payments and accounts, and that's you know, driven a lot by regulation. Um, but if you look at the sort of the non-mandated ones, that sort of identity, uh, know your customer authorization style APIs, they're very, very popular. And that credit scoring, uh, loan pre-approvals, faster loans, less risk, um, they're very popular as well. And you can see the sort of other APIs uh, running there. So um, we've got another quick poll on this, on um, what sort of API products are you most likely to launch or would love to launch uh, sort of within the next six months or so? Uh, if you can uh, cast your votes on the poll now, that would be great. And again, we'll give you about 30 seconds for that one. So 
So I think this is where, you know, it's it's moving beyond sort of the regulated uh, APIs, you know, the premium APIs that you want to do or sort of uh, um, more specific uh, services that you're you're uh, you're looking to achieve with your end customers. OK, um, we've got. Uh, more payment services that seems to be the um, major one and um, the others are pretty even around uh, financial uh, and account info and uh, know your customer thank you very much so just a few quick examples um, you know this is where you're reducing uh, um, the regional australia bank and basic uh, reduce the time to cash for loans, you're talking, uh, taking a service that could take uh, days or weeks and doing it in under 90 minutes using API technology and risk assessment. BBVA generating uh, pay stats. So they, through their POS system, you know, they know where people are buying stuff uh, and they can create this map of consumer habits. And that data is valuable to other people and monetizing and selling that data, uh, anonymized, of course, to meet data standards. Uh, is uh, incredibly uh, valuable service. Uh, again, BBVA enabled that sort of uh, banking as a, a service aspect of embedding BBVA services into third party systems and products. Um, AMB AMRO uh, looking to create new API products and demonstrate the clear business value of uh, when banking or using services for small business, how you can automate processes, get real-time data, uh, get real-time transactional information and improve the way you do your business or customers do their business and promoting that. So they're all really uh, key aspects. Uh, now we've obviously, we've been working with banks, financial institutions for some time and going through the, 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 the open banking uh, in the EU and we're working in Australia and uh, other regions around the globe as they introduce their uh, banking regulations. Now, some of the key lessons that we've uh, learned is don't be scared to share the data. You know, just being a tick box exercise to meet a compliance isn't going to grow your business. It might protect you from being fined or, you know, um, uh, 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 getting chastised by your, your, your regulator. Uh, but that doesn't really help grow your business and, and treating this as a tech, tick box exercise really doesn't uh, help. So really, you want to be looking at this as an opportunity, any regulation or getting ahead of regulation and adopt and test new approaches. Um, this is a business strategy, not an IT strategy. APIs are very technical. And yes, you can get into lots of details around, do you use a GraphQL API? Do you use a REST API? Do you need web sockets? Do you need streaming APIs? Do you need asynchronous? A There's loads of different ways of delivering that, but that's something that your uh, technicians will uh, help you with or your partners or uh, our partner technology partners here like bring will help you decide that but this is about a business strategy on how do you want to use apis to improve your business uh, and, and either increase revenue save costs uh, with some of the examples that we've been talking about and it's get the fundamentals right having a reliable and flexible platform a key if you look at you know, the stats that are coming out on sort of the open banking APIs, you know, reporting on reliability. If your APIs and uh, API infrastructure is constantly down and people aren't getting the right service and can't access it, then your ultimate business goal is not going to be achieved. So that platform is absolutely critical to that. Uh, oh, sorry, that's... Uh, and that's where I am going to hand over to my uh, uh, colleague from Bring, uh, Paolo. Uh, so I will stop sharing and uh, let him take over the screen. So thank you very much for listening to me. And uh, if you've got any questions, please do put it in the Q&A. Okay, Paolo, you should be able to share your screen now. Thanks, Chris. Are you seeing my screen, first of all? Yep, I can see your screen. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, thanks. Thank you very much, Chris. Uh, 
Hi everyone, my name is Paulo, like uh, Steve uh, mentioned in the beginning. So I'm responsible for the integration business at Bring Global. So it's, it's a line of business that addresses this very exciting challenge of helping our customers in the open banking slash open APIs journey that Chris just de described so well. So nice, nice to speak to, to you all. As we, we say these days, nice to e speak for you, uh, for you all today. Thanks for coming and for spending this part of the of the day of your day with us. So my goal for today is to discuss with you the word how, okay? The adverb how. So how can we get there? How can bring help you get there? Okay? So I'll try to do that by firstly describe one of our most important uh, projects, okay? Some quick facts, the challenge, the solution. Uh, so it's how we did it, how we are doing it. Secondly, I'm going to tell you about how do we approach these projects and how do you suggest to taking this forward. And just before handing over uh, to Steve for our, our Q&A section, I just wanted to give you some information about our company, about Bring, for, um, for you to know just a little, a little, little better who, who doesn't uh, know us uh, uh, at this stage, okay? So it's again the how word, uh, like how about bring? So, so okay. So let's go to the to the to the project. Some uh, quick facts. So it's a bank, okay? It's it's an African bank, okay? We can disclose the 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 name at this stage. So let's just call it a bank. So the solution, uh, of course, oh, it's all, all about APIs, but uh, uh, also about services, also about microservices. In this case, automation with DevOps uh, initiative, ETC. So in this case, we are involved uh, also on the middleware side. That's, as you know, uh, it's a crucial layer uh, in, this, in this initiative. Um, in, um, in fact, uh, in this uh, uh, bank, that's where everything started, okay? So, team and, uh, and duration. So basically we're talking uh, of a typical squad working in a very agile way with the, with the customer. So we have a team of seven consultants with different profiles that I will describe in the next slide, okay? So, uh, and until now, we're taking about uh, seven months uh, span. So what was the challenge in then? Yeah. It was all about, uh, like Chris was, was uh, uh, explaining very well, about expanding, in this case, expanding the business, getting new revenue streams through partnerships, okay? So in these first use cases, in the first use cases, uh, range from transfers, loans, and payments uh, for merchants, dealers, etc. So we extend these capabilities to the partners for payment services. So partners again. Uh, we also have another challenge that is unify all the payments via one single entry and exit using unified payment API. So another another challenge. So to tackle this. Uh, uh, this use challenge, what is the solution that uh, uh, I, I'm just showing? So in the end of the day, it was all about a collaborative approach from all the parties. The bank, of course, with their vision uh, to start, the WSO2, our partner with the state-of-the-art tools and bring as a strategic partner for the customer, envisioning the enterprise architecture, solution design and project development. So we already went to a little bit through the benefits, but I would like uh, also to, to say that this open banking initiative in the bank is one of the pillars of the bank digital transformation journey that is enabling the bank to be a more agile, modern and responsive organization, okay? So back to the, to the word how. So how, how can bring help you uh, uh, in this journey? So, um, to start, I would like to say that we are I'm more than happy to discuss the approach individually, which, which each one of you, uh, which you are, uh, with your company, so we are totally open to, to that. But I would like to share the way that you recommend to, to start. 
And it's basically to, to work with you to identify the first use case. If, if that's the first, it depends on the maturity, of course, that, that you have. So, uh, and if, if it's the first one, so the, uh, it's, it, uh, we recommend that to be the one that's, that uh, it makes more sense, uh, let's say, for you to start. The one that, that will have more impact, okay? Uh, then uh, we work together in, in this is for, in this first uh, use case until we go live. That's that's our suggestion uh, approach. So again, how? So uh, the, all this in a completely agile uh, way of doing the uh, the project, setting up a, a team of uh, uh, a squad of seven people with different profiles that you see there uh, in the presentation that goes from solution architect, business analyst, developers, or in this case, one tester and one team leader. That was, is also the, the, the Scrum Master. So in terms of calendar, we are typically talking about three months from the moment that we start until the go live of the, of the first use case. So more, I would like to also to add that during this time, we are also working with you on the backlog for the other use cases, working on the scope, user stories ATC. And that leads us to the, the to our, our, our application development and maintenance service, where we continue, we can continue to work with, with you in other use cases. That's that's the uh, the case of the uh, of the that project that I I just uh, described to you. So we all we also can help uh, um, Operating the solution, uh, if 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 that's the case, and put also a, a, a maintenance team in place, so we can discuss uh, all these all these features. So um, we are more more than happy, like I said in, in the beginning, to discuss these how details with you. So just to just to end before I before I hand it over to to Steve. I leave you some info for those who are not so uh, we are not uh, so familiar with us being so. Like Steve said in the beginning, we are a leading technology company specializing in building and providing cutting edge business and technology solutions to improve clients' performance around the world. So at Bring, we are committed to making an impact on millions of people's people lives by solving our customer our, our clients' challenges in a digital connected and cashless world. So we basically deliver to businesses world-class digital solutions and insights, transforming the world through seamless services at different life events. So I have some, some uh, let's say some, some trivia for you, just uh, I'm going to, to, to do this quickly. So we are present in four continents. We have companies in, in aid from Europe to, to Latin America. In, in Africa and Asia. So we are currently working in, in more or less 20 countries. We have more than 240 people around the world, mainly focus on financial services in, in, in telco, telcos. Uh, on, in local courses, we, we also can, can work in, in, other, uh, in other industry. So we have uh, four local uh, partners networks in, in four continents seven global alliances now have projects running in more than, than 10 countries and this is just a, a, um, some of the services that that we provide and we are very glad to discuss this with you and to share the the, the presentation with you okay so uh, it was a pleasure to to share with us this afternoon so i'll hand it over to for steve to Steve for the Q&A section. So, Steve. Thank you very much, Paolo. Um, before we go into the Q&A, uh, the, the email contacts of Paolo, myself, and Chris are displayed there. Please feel free to reach out to any one of us on the content you have uh, uh, you've received today from the panelists. And thank you very much, Paolo and Chris, for, for the, the very insightful session. I will ask uh, attendees at this moment any questions. I can't see any questions um, on the on the Q and A, um, but if any, uh, please 
uh, this is the time to, 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 to just put that out in the next five minutes. And I see we also have a poll, an end of event poll. Please uh, do feel free to, to, to check what you'd like to do next, to select which you'd like to do next. I see a, someone typing a question. Let's see. Yeah, please add to the, uh, if you just type it into the Q and A, we can, um, well, I know uh, it looked like one of the attendees was raising their, their hand. If you've got a question, please put it in the uh, Q and A uh, box and we'll be able to see it from there. Leonard, yeah, thank you, Leonard. We appreciate. Yeah. And if you've got any questions after the event, as as uh, Steve said, please do reach out to us. Uh, you can um, come to our email addresses, go to our uh, websites, wso2.com or bringglobal.com, uh, and uh, please do um, reach out if you uh, need any assistance or have any queries or questions about. Um, how you can uh, utilize some of the uh, aspects we've been talking about today. Thank you very much, Chris. Okay, uh, Chris, there's a question here. Um, what has been your experience with internal readiness to leverage APIs from a soft skills perspective? For example, mindset. This is coming from uh, Tebogo Mogaliman. I hope I got that right. Chris, did you get the question? I, I did indeed, and I don't know if Paolo's got anything here. So obviously we've worked okay. with um, lots of customers at different stages, as we've discussed today. And this whole digital transformation piece um, has got a massive cultural aspect to it in the business as well on moving from how they traditionally do business, how they traditionally integrate their systems. So depending on you where you are in the journey, um, that um, sort of mindset, cultural aspect can be more tricky, uh, especially earlier on. So this is why bringing, we mentioned earlier about bringing this as a business strategy, not just a technical strategy um, and presenting in that way can help uh, get people to accept uh, the, the necessary changes to make these things happen because they can see the actual business effect and the business value in doing so. Um, presenting this as a technical uh, approach just to put in an API platform and you know connect your services quicker, um, you can't get the whole organization around that. Your, your technicians and your CIO and your operationals manager and that you know they'll see the benefits and values and you can get some good business cases there but you know, leveraging that wider um, digital facilitation rather than transformation to, to, to take those opportunities we've been discussing, that, that, that business approach really helps in, in changing that. And, you know, you've hit on a key, key point. It's, you know, it's the technology, people and culture that you've got to work on. I don't know, Paolo, from your experience and the work Bring have done, you want anything to add on that? Yeah, yeah, I totally agree with you. This, this, this isn't a, a technical conversation. It's a business conversation and to set up a, a strategy. Uh, so I totally uh, agree with you. So uh, everyone started by the internal APIs, like, like, we, like we know, right? So the, the change that, that is uh, happening now in terms of, of uh, soft skills perspective, 
like like uh, Tebogo just uh, just asked, is is on that side basically on on the business side. And that's where, where what we are uh, um, uh, seeing uh, the changing of the mentalities, let's say like this, uh, changing from a technical uh, perspective to a business one. So that's, that's the way. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Chris and Paolo. Um, Tebogo, I hope that answers your question. If, 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 uh, if not, I, I am also happy to, to, to engage you further on this subject um, uh, after this uh, session. Another question uh, for Paolo and uh, Chris from Samir Ducci. Is there a way to expand the model to non-banking business cases? For example, agriculture and retail. And is the, and is the business approach, does the business approach stay the same? Um, I'll take that initially. So uh, yes, obviously this, this, this webinar we only was focusing within the financial banking sector. But if you look at the core approach there of leveraging data, digitally transforming your organization, um, that works across uh, any industry vertical. So um, we didn't go through our normal sort of corporate WSO2 slides, but from a sort of an API led integration perspective, we work across every single uh, industry vertical, whether it be retail, agriculture, transport, tourism, um, manufacturing, uh, and having obviously the what you achieve with with these platforms changes slightly, um, but you've still got those core requirements to expose data, expand your customer reach, improve your internal processing. And those same core capabilities are per, uh, as valid in, in any other um industry as well so thanks Samir to sort of point that out I should have been a bit clearer I know we've got a little bit of a mixed audience but as I say that today we were sort of focusing on the sort of financial sector um but uh, this uh, the core aspects here are absolutely relevant across the across the board yeah exactly just to just to add just to add one thing before you Steve so uh, basically I totally agree with the uh, with the uh, with Chris uh in, in the other in the other industries, let's say the the, the what you, we uh, heard or or, or the uh, what is what the market is talking about is uh, the open open APIs uh, right instead of open banking. So the conversation is totally valid. Uh, we we can address all of the, that industries that you are uh, that you are asking for, for sure. Thank you. It's a it's a more it's a generic op open. Sorry, Steve. Just gonna say yeah, there's yeah, yeah. a big trend to more sort of just open data, and that accounts to sort of open energy, open telco, open healthcare. Um, all of those are uh, elements that you know uh, we're working with partners like Bring um, to uh, help deliver solutions within. Great. Thank you very much, Chris and Paolo. Um, Samir, again, I hope that answers your question. And uh, for more um, discussions on the subject, we'd be happy to uh, you know, connect with you and, and, and delve a bit more on, on the additional industries uh, where we can apply this technology. I believe we are now out of time, uh, three past the hour and um, I would at this point want to close the webinar. I thank everyone for attending. Uh, we really appreciate uh, your time to, to, to engage with us. Um, and, and as an in initial webinar, we will be having many more of this. Uh, getting feedback, Chris, from, uh, from our customers like Samir, maybe we also need to consider additional industries and uh, that that will be will be will be arranged for. Um, but uh, to close, um, I would just like to encourage all the attendees. Uh, our contacts are, are, are there on the screen. Uh, please reach out to any one of us, and we are happy to have a conversation around where to take your business and how we can. Uh, Paolo kept on saying the how at Bring. Uh, we we are obsessed, and we are always talking about the how. We want to deliver, we want to do it, and we know how to do it. Um, I would also like to thank the WSO2 team and the Bring team who have put this together and looking forward to once again um, arranging the same session for our customers. 
with that, I would like to close the webinar session and look forward to seeing you all in the next one. Thank you.